Hello Bits and Bones, my name is Lady V, and welcome to my channel. I've been getting into writing haikus a bit recently, thinking about publishing a collection of haikus or something, who knows. Anyway, a while ago I read a book about introduction to haiku, which was pretty dry but educational because it went over the history of haiku too. I gave Introduction to Haiku, an anthology of poems and poets from Basho to Shiki, a 3.5 out of 5 and rounded up because it was really informational and the author slash translator had a noticeable voice, but I also think he had a bit of a pretentious bias to how elevated a haiku can really be. Either way, I figured I'd share what I learned about haiku from reading that with you, in case you're a little interested interested in elevating your haiku knowledge too. So here's my take on a non-committal understanding of haiku, a bit of history, and the permission to express yourself. Have you ever heard of a haiku before? Of course you have. Not just because you're a cultured writer, but because it's been adapted and repurposed across the globe. With that, however, much of what makes, or made, a haiku has been lost. Let's take a quick dive into the way haiku has come to be generally understood in North America, what was lost in translation, literally, <laughs> and what you can take away from this to improve your own. The new haiku. The haiku as it is taught in countries outside of Japan have largely been stripped down to their syllable count. The haiku structure is three lines, five syllables, seven syllables, and five syllables again. As much as haiku is more ancient and layered than that, haiku is also a great learning practice for young writers. Active awareness of the length and beats of a word is a great way to strengthen one's understanding of language, no matter which one you're speaking. Some languages, of course, will be vastly easier to accommodate haiku format than others. I can't imagine trying to fit a poem into haiku using Swedish or something. <laughs> the in-between. With freeform and insta-poetry on the rise, the strict adherence to poetic form has deteriorated with the accessibility of poems. As much as anyone might know all haiku are meant to fit the 575 syllable structure, it would be a topic of contention in today's creative climate what the next most important aspect of the format is. Imagery, metaphor, rhyming, there's no easy answer for this as haiku has been adapted by other cultures and writer styles slash intentions, but it is interesting to note how haiku once were. The old haiku, basho. When looking at haiku historically, as with all art and eras, there is an ideal, the original visionaries. Matsuo Basho, 1644-1695, is noted as the man who perfected and popularized haiku as an art form, acting as a mentor and forming a school of disciplines specializing in haiku. Reading through the introduction of haiku, you'll find a condensed recounting of how poetry developed in Japan and the notable poets that turned haiku into an art form. As it is with all aspects of writing, different haiku poets favored different styles. Basho was revered and many aspired to mimic his work, but some of his students intentionally alternated from it. Basho's work was iconic in its ability to paint a scene in such few words. He'd not only paint a vivid image flowing with contrast, but usually allude to a metaphor for life, death, etc. I would honestly try and read this in Japanese if uh, I wasn't about to butcher it. Um, so in English, the haiku reads, another year is gone, a traveler's shade on my head, straw sandals at my feet from 1685. Unfortunately, since the original poems require translation from Japanese to English, the structure of haiku cannot translate with it, as other languages are vastly different in the syllables used for similar meaning words. At best, reading ancient translated Japanese, we can appreciate the sense of what they were aiming for, and honestly, I think that's a good thing. If a work cannot be translated accurately, it should not pretend to be appreciated accurately. As much as we cannot grasp the fluent skill of late haiku masters, we can at least take what is impactful from them with us and adapt ourselves accordingly. Alternate haiku. After the great era of basho, and as we see in today's climate, haiku is so accessible it is hard not to deviate from tradition. Haiku became more than an image painted in three lines alluding to something deeper. It could also be more like a riddle or a joke. Here's one called Summer Heat. Springtime, and it's hark, they're singing, in the summertime, frogs bark translated by Harold Gold Henderson from an introduction 
to haiku. Reading through this collection of history and translated haiku, I was surprised to find many of the haiku were quite playful. Summer heat is akin to an exclaimed complaint about frogs mating season sounds. It seems like a haiku can be little more than a statement attached to a time and place, and it can certainly rhyme if you want to swing it. Even Basho had his funnier, relatable haikus, like, Buy my new banana plant, the first sign of something I loathe, a miscanthus bud. Controversy. In an introduction to haiku, which was translated by Harold Gold Henderson, I found it important to acknowledge the revolutionaries of the past while respecting modern bias. As a commentary on a more modern haiku writer slash student, Henderson stated, One European admirer of Chio has said bitterly that her poems are not hazy enough to be haiku, and there is enough truth in this to make it worth considering. What Chio's defender meant was that if it is very easy to mistake haziness for profundity, and there are so so-called haiku, produced by the hundred thousand, which are not profound at all, but merely foggy. This is true, and it is one of the dangers of the apparently easy haiku form. But of course, it is not a valid criticism of real haiku. This, of course, brings to light any scholar or translator's own bias. Even the essence of some translated haiku's professed artwork had me feeling a haziness instead of a profundity. It's all a matter of opinion. So begs the question, can we even write haiku in the modern era? Are we allowed? Is the form of haiku as an art being reserved for the past, when the literacy skill and vision of a condensed story were so much harder to perfect and attain than it is today? I've come to believe that there's no answer to this. Is haiku dead? Scholars of haiku will all draw a line for what is and isn't acceptable practice in haiku, but in that, they will also all have preferences, masters which they believe brought more to the rich history of the form than others. Haiku is not dead, although like all art, some may feel as though it's reserved to its former masters. Any artist can respect and enact the principles of a Renaissance painting, but not painting in the time period they shall never be called a Renaissance painter. Haiku is not dead, it is simply evolved and adapted with time. So much as it's important to respect the conventions of the past, we must also be allowed leniency to bend them to our own vision. After all this, if you're asking yourself what you need to do to write a good haiku, don't. Haiku is many things, and it can be whatever you need it to be. Haiku is art, haiku is expression. Play into metaphors, stick to striking one-off images, make a setup with the first two lines, and add a humorous punchline to the last. It's all up to you. You're your own haiku master, so happy paintings. So I hope that was a bit interesting to you as it was to me. After learning all this, I was definitely less intimidated by haiku. The bias of Henderson kind of reminded me of um, art critics, <laughs> in which case I was like, oh, okay. You want to revere and hold these things up on a pedestal, that's good for you, but that doesn't necessarily block me from the entire realm of it. I just need to understand that. I think like all forms of writing, the greats are held on a bit of a pedestal and given more credit than really warranted, so it feels a bit hard to step into, but haikus really are as simple as 575, so just don't mess that up <laughs> and maybe ask someone else to double check your syllables when you're done. Anyway. Thank you so much for watching. Special thanks to my patrons. If you'd like to support me and my content, you can find a link to my Patreon in the description below. Thanks again, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!